so today we'll talk about the smart home movement and kind of you've seen a lot of slow adoption in some of these devices so we'll look into some of that and we'll see how you could bring just-in-time inventory benefits to homes with some of this new technology there we go okay so first I wanted to look at one of the what I consider a success story in the smart home space this is Google's Nest they bought the company a couple years ago and what Nest delivers to homeowners is an easier to use thermostat than what you previously had you have an easier way to adapt this one by using your smartphone and then it learns over time both from your preferences and then also from how well the heating or cooling is actually affecting the home what they advertise is that you can pay this off in about two years what independent studies and Nest's own study have shown is you save about 13 percent and that adds up to about 250 dollars 280 dollars worth of savings for a homeowner so that pays off the Nest it retails on Amazon for about 248.75 uh, as of today uh, what I think is really interesting about the Nest is it delivers a clear value proposition to customers. You can say two year payback period, you instantly think actually I'll be saving money any time after that. It also allows you to easily achieve that value. So one of the things Nest does is it connects with utilities and allows them to adjust your heating and cooling based on peak loading in the summer. So just turning people down a couple degrees might allow the overall energy infrastructure to save a lot more. Uh, Enernox, a company out of Tuck that does something similar on a commercial scale, but you can see how easily this is that it's just Nest plugged into your house and it can make that change with a consumer installing it after a couple minutes. You also have Nest now doing a works with Nest uh, system where they set standards and now you can plug in other devices. Lighting's one of the easier ones you can imagine right off the bat, but you're starting to look at washing machines, dryers, where it gets a little squishier from a user perspective on how much I really need to run my washing machine while I'm out, things like that. But they're, they're starting to figure out which devices are going to connect and what's going to make sense. So Nest, I consider a success in this space because it does save people money and it's gotten decent consumer traction. All right. Now we'll shift over to just-in-time inventory management. This, for anyone who's taken operations class, it's top of mind. but. This came out of Toyota, other companies, steel, and then automotive industry in Japan. You're looking at post-World uh, War II Japan. Most of the industry has been destroyed from bombing from the Allied forces. And you're looking at a situation where you have an abundance of labor, but you have shortage of natural resources, land, and capital. Really an opposite from what you would have seen in the US for you know, industrial development for the US, where we have lots of natural resources, capital, and land. That's why you've seen just-in-time inventory, this lean production process founded in Japan and now only later adapted in the US and other places. Um, and what they did was they worked closely with their suppliers and customers to say, OK, we need to make a system that makes sense for both of us. I'm going to buy more steel long term. If we can cut the cost here, I can invest in more machinery. And it actually benefits the whole supply chain. So Japan was able to dramatically cut inventory levels in the steel industry, become much more competitive. And then later, you saw that with Toyota, uh, Honda, and other companies. I'll shift now to an example of Dell Computers, which is probably a more well-known example for many people. Dell was selling direct before other companies kind of figured out the benefit of this. And you see that you're buying components from parts suppliers in Asia and other places. And then Dell's assembling the computer, selling it direct to consumers from a website platform. It eliminates the distribution system and the retail level of inventory, which when you compare Dell to HP, Dell, five total days of inventory on hand. And in a computer industry where you're rapidly changing the technology, new parts are coming out, you don't want to be sitting on all that. In HP, 30 days of just raw material, uh, 63 days of raw materials, then 30 in the supply chain means that, I mean, that's a dramatic difference. And one of the numbers I found was you're seeing components lose about 1% of value every week. Add that up over the course of the year, just the difference in inventory that's sitting around between these companies, and you saw you see a quick number here The Dell's profit margin was 18%. The other companies were in the single digits. The inventory cost is making a big difference between those companies. And this is where I think that you can take that story and actually see some parallels in the consumer space. So one of the things we'll talk about is kind of a smart home idea or a smart home movement. Uh, one of the reasons I think this might take off is you've got headline statistics of food. About 40% of food is wasted in the US. Big number, kind of shocks you right away. When you break it down, there's about 25% of that is at the consumer level. So you've now bought the groceries, how much of the produce gets thrown out, this and that, just because you're not finishing meals or they're sitting around in the fridge for a few days. Uh, wasted food in the US equals, almost equals the entire food production of sub-Saharan Africa. 
And then just overall, when you think of cooking, buying groceries, actually preparing meals in your home, the technology has entered in little ways. You've got KitchenAid mixers, you've got Cuisinart machines, you've got some delivery you know, now of groceries, but you haven't seen a full solution. Uh, we'll look at some, but for the most part, when you can picture mom making food, you know, mom, grandma making food 50 years ago, it's still kind of the same in homes. And I think it'd be an interesting place to see more technology. There are three approaches that I'll highlight here. Uh, the reason I picked these three is they're all kind of agnostic in providers. You have things like an app from Campbell's, uh, Campbell's brand where they're trying to push their soup, they're trying to push other products, but it inherently is going to be limited because it's just their branded products. A lot of companies are doing that as well. We'll look at meal kits through Blue Apron. We'll look at pantry management apps through Mealboard, which is a, just a small app. And then Smart Appliances, that's the Samsung Family Hub refrigerator on the right. Uh, Blue Apron, what they do is prepackage ingredients, send them directly to your home, simplifies the cooking process. You've got a simple recipe. Now you've got everything ready to go. OK, now I can learn to cook. Or for some people, it's just the convenience of having all those items on hand. The problem I see in this being a global, really holistic solution is the cost is about double what you pay in the grocery store. For a lot of people, that doesn't make sense. You don't have the extra discretionary income to really be spending that much. And then the convenience benefit is lost if you're still buying cereal, you're still buying milk, you're still buying other things to just have them around the house for lunch, for breakfast, for the weekends. If this isn't your full meal solution, saying that you're going to skip a trip to the grocery store, you're never going to go to the grocery store again, doesn't quite make sense to consumers if it's not 100% of your meals. The Family Hub refrigerator came out. You saw it at CES this year. There were some really interesting reactions on Twitter talking about how drunk the Samsung engineers might have had to be to come up with this and actually <laughs> roll it out as a consumer product. There's a 21-inch touchscreen there. It allows you to see inside your fridge so you can see on your smartphone. You can say, do I have milk at home? How many milks do I have? You know, did the other person go shopping? Did they not? There's maybe a little bit of benefit there. You can also see it just when you're at home. If you don't want to open the door and stare at the fridge, you can just look at it on the screen. I mean, whoa, we're blowing you away with the killer apps here. Um, <laughs> You can also enter items, so you can enter, I bought milk, and the expiration date is October 24th. And then maybe it'll ping you when it gets close to October 24th, like, hey, the milk's about to go bad. Let's, let's go heavy on cereal. So there are, there are some benefits here that Samsung was trying to explain at the CES. I was trying to read the articles, really scraping away for the, the killer apps. There is a meal, there is a ingredient ordering portion of it where you can order your groceries through this platform, connects through Instacart, and also pays through MasterCard. So potentially you click a few buttons and get delivery. That's a possible benefit. But cost is going to limit the adoption. Every 13 years or so, people buy a fridge, so you're not going to see this take off overnight. And then there's so much friction there in entering items that it just doesn't seem to really be something that might take off. Uh, meal board's something that was really interesting when I found it. If you enter your items into it, so you're scanning UPC codes, you're entering them manually, but now you know all the ingredients in your house. You know what's in your pantry. So now they can deliver recipes that you can make right now. And you start to see that, OK, I know ingredients. Now I can pick recipes. And also, I can use it for a shopping list. So I ran out of this, click a button. OK, now it's on my shopping list. So it kind of simplifies some of the process for users there. But there's a lot of effort required. This is, I went to the store. I just scanned all my items at self-checkout. And then I got home. And while the kids are crying, I'm scanning all these cans of soup to then put them in the cupboard. It doesn't seem like something a lot of consumers are going to jump onto. It, has a very limited selection of recipes. There's a few apps that do this, but all of them you know, slowly but surely are growing the recipe selection. If there's not enough, you're not going to find the right meals for you. You're not going to be able to customize. And then it's missing a shortcut on inventory tracking. Uh, I've done some research in this space. And when you think about a receipt and how it already has all your items listed, why would you then go home and scan them all again? Like, Is there a way to connect either through a loyalty program or something else to make this more integrated? Uh, so those are the three overall case studies. I think the future of this space is kind of who's going to get that killer app right? Who's going to be able to talk to users and say, this is the value I'm going to deliver to you, and this is why you should try this out. This is why you should take a shot at us. And then in the first week, if I can show enough value, then maybe it's going to become something sticky. Um, is recipes, are recipes going to be the next big thing? So is there enough of a possibility there to say, hey, I can deliver you great recipes from what you have in your house? Is that going to make people want to track the items or connect through a loyalty program? Would that ever take off? And then who's best positioned? So a really interesting question, certainly a thought-provoking one. Grocery stores, there's then the delivery services, the Amazon Fresh, that are layered on top of it. If you always order through them, they're going to know what you order, and they can kind of track it, just like a loyalty program at a grocery store. 
is it ever going to be appliance makers? Does Samsung's solution resonate with you at all? Could they, you know, tweak that a little bit and would it ever make sense? Or Facebook. I like to throw Facebook up in most presentations just to say, like, hey, let's imagine what they could do in a different space. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll leave this slide up here. Um, that was kind of my overall look at the space. It's very interesting, very early. I think 2016 is an interesting year to kind of look at some of the early uh, entry efforts that companies are making. But then long term, who knows what's going to take off. Thank you.